Craziness is the best way to describe this day, and frustration is what many people are feeling. Some of the flood walls have been activated where others have not. And as our eyewitness news team, Sky Team drone shows us how high the Ohio River is, glass still scattered here on the ground, actually a live ammo bullet on the ground as well. And we're told that no one was injured throughout this whole situation. Out your window, those residential streets were still snow covered. Well, some people are here cooling down down in this splash pad. A cooling station actually just opened. This encampment area has families living near St. Albans High School area concerned. Let's look at where that is. It is right down the street of the baseball field. As you can see over my shoulder here, there is a tent in the power pole. And this business is not wasting any time. In fact, they're actually rebuilding another tent. As much of the day was spent around the 5% pay raise. And others are saying this is a wake up call. An item there, like a shoe. It helps with the search. We're out here protesting and hoping lawmakers Listen to them. They say that she is usually a loving mother. The West Virginia legislature typically calls a special session. 23 year old Emily Robinson is disabled and receives government assistance known as SSI. Like most government assistance, how much received depends on your monthly income. Dealing with Social Security and payments and issues is not one of the easiest things. While she lived through the water crisis and planned to apply for the settlement money, she was told by the local Social Security Administration office that the payment of $550 would impact her monthly assistance. When you get it, we're going to count it as income and we'll have to take your check or part of your check and to, until you can get it figured out. And for a one-time payment, it wasn't worth the trouble. This could affect thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. Bruce Perone is with Legal Aid of West Virginia, a local nonprofit that represents low-income and disabled people. He estimates about 10,000 people in the counties impacted are on SSI, and many more are receiving help from programs like Medicaid and SNAP. As soon as we heard about this settlement, we realized there were potential problems here. Mm -hmm. We realized this could lead to just massive legal problems. And so we decided, look, let's try to head this off at the pass. Let's contact the agencies. Perone and his team reached out, and it took months to get answers. The answers we've gotten so far from both DHHR and Social Security are that, no, the basic payments will not be counted as income. However, they're still waiting to hear what people will need to provide. Perone says Robinson's situation is unfortunate because she was thinking ahead. A payment of $550 that comes into the house could make a real difference in their ability to pay some bills. While Robinson is glad others will benefit, she says the situation is still frustrating. So this is definitely something they should have had figured out before they ever announced it. Ashley Bishop, Eyewitness News. The alderman's challenge was shoveling snow and ice at his workplace. He says his commute was fine. You know, I had no problem. You know, our Department of Highways does a good job, you know, making the roads clear. A um, little, little slushy coming up on the corridor, but, you know, this is the worst of it right here. The West Virginia Department of Highways was busy with plows out working on the interstates and state roads. But it was a different story when you looked out your window. Those residential streets were still snow covered. But the ice and snow covered roads led to some crashes like this car and plow truck collision in Charleston South Hills. And on the interstate, a DOT plow was hit by a driver after following too close. Luckily, no one was injured in either incident. The blanket of snow meant one thing for some children. I'm just sledding and having fun. Kids and even parents took to the hills at Cato Park. All right. I'll get on the back. To sled uh, and even snowboard. Uh, uh, Whoa, no. The Barton family says the fresh powder means one thing, tradition. We've been coming here for a number of years and, uh, you know, it's good fun. Hopefully, well, we hope for more snow than what we had today, but uh, we'll take it. Despite the hazards and even work that comes with the flakes, some people in the area say it's okay. I love this time of year. I look forward to it. I love the snow. In Charleston, Ashley Bishop, Eyewitness News.
people have come out here to make their voices heard. And one family in particular came out here today to actually show that history does repeat itself and they're fighting that this never happens again. I certainly didn't, you know, at, at five years old, know that that's exactly what I wanted to do, but, uh, you know, I'm glad I have it. Kanawha County teacher Courtney Barlett refers to a picture that was taken as she sits on the same steps in the same situation just 28 years ago. She was five years old and with her single mom on the Capitol steps, holding a sign that said, I don't want to be a teacher when I grow up. But little did she realize she would become a teacher and marry one too. It is in our blood. It is our destiny. It's what we were meant to do. Barlett and her husband, along with their now five-year-old daughter, Harper, sit holding similar signs. We sat right here when I was five years old with that same sign. Doing the same thing, doing the same thing with Nana. How does that make you feel? It kind of makes me feel sad. Yeah. A lesson, Barlett says, in doing the right thing. It's kind of the age-old saying, if you don't learn from your mistakes, history will repeat itself. And sadly, history has repeated itself. And I really hope that for my daughter or any of the other students that are out here, it doesn't repeat itself again. And as for Harper, she doesn't mind supporting her mom and dad, but says her sign may ring true. What do you want to be when you grow up? Do you know? A vet. A vet? Would you want to be a teacher? No. Barlett says she is fine with whatever she decides, even if it's teaching. I would never discourage her. Um, I would caution her uh, just to make sure that she knows what she's getting into.